Hello, I'm Harry Malott with Hypotherm. Welcome Facebook friends and all newcomers. I'm here today with Jim Colt, also with Hypotherm. And we're going to cover the PowerMax 45 in a little bit more detail than the last time we did a live feed. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit more about the system and also demonstrate two new applications and one being spot weld removal, so a precision gouging application, spot weld removal, as well as marking. Yep, we're going to do some mechanized marking on a, on a home-built machine. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that when we get to it. Great. Um, so to kick us off, let's go in on the system. So for our precision gouging applications, there's a couple things we need to do. We need to change the consumables and put in our precision gouging um, nozzle as well as the shield. And on the system side of things, we need to adjust the mode output. So we're going to jump down from cutting to gouging mode. And for precision gouging, we typically work below 25 amps for both marking and gouging uh, of spot welds. So I'm going to actually dial this all the way down to 10 amps, and then uh, this machine is actually set up and ready to go. We have a 75 uh, degree hand torch uh, hooked up to this. Obviously, when we switch it over uh, to marking on the cutting table, we'll put on the machine yeah. torch. Well, this is this is really a neat application. I've been a gearhead all my life, and when you have to remove a a rear quarter panel from a car or something like that, they're held on to spot welds. And so typically you use a drill, a special drill bit, and you drill through part of the spot weld and then pop the fender off. It's time consuming, the drill bit's hard. So you're gonna actually wash that off using a precision gouging technique, right? Yeah, so I'm gonna wash the metal around, away from around the spot weld first. Yes. And then once I removed all the metal around the spot welds on the strip, uh, then I can just separate the two pieces of metal. I can then use also the plasma arc and go back and wash away any uh, remaining weld that may be on the surface. So that obviously reduces the amount of time uh, compared to the drilling process. Um, it's, it's quite easy as everybody will see and it's less fatiguing. So yeah. you, as you probably experienced when you're doing a car restoration or car repair, you can have hundreds of these spot welds oh, on sure. a body panel. You and go through a whole bunch of those little expensive drill bits. Too. Yes. So, <laughs> and that's an advantage as well as doing it with plasma. You can you can use uh, you know the plasma nozzle and shield and and, and do hundreds of uh, spot welds before you even have to replace this uh, this yeah. part. So, there's there's one other thing that's going to happen that's kind of different from other plasma torches too. When since Harry just uh, set this process up and just plugged this torch in, uh, when you go over with this new torch, when you first trigger it you're going to get a, a pulsing of air. That's a warning that the torch is live. And so it's instead of allowing the torch to just fire instantaneously, which could be a little dangerous if you weren't expecting it, um, it's kind of a neat new feature. I like it. So. Thanks. Yeah, it's a, it helps uh, change out of consumables a lot easier. So you can do it right at the torch without having to go back to the power supply and recycling the power supply. Uh, so it's a great benefit in that regards. And uh, that, that audible puffs of air is a good indication to the end user that the next time they fire the or pull the trigger, that's going to go. Yeah. Fire. <laughs> Don't put your finger in front that's of it. Right. <laughs> that's right. Okay. All right. Cool. So let's, uh, let's get set up over here and we'll do some uh, round removal. So as I said, we have a strip here with five spot welds on it. I'm going to remove the metal around the spot welds, each one. And then I'm going to go back, once I can separate the two pieces of the metal, and wash away any remaining weld. Now the beauty of the plasma process is, is I can do this without penetrating the base metal. So what I have here is the top metal is a 20 gauge piece of mild steel, and the base metal is a 16 gauge. So here again I got my precision gouging nozzle and shield on, safety trigger or my torque block trigger, and you'll hear that pulse of air that I was talking about. That's the audible indication that the next time I fire the torque, the arc is going to come out at the end. So there we go.
there we are. You see it separated right off. Two pieces of metal. Now I didn't leave a little bit of weld at the bottom, but I can go back with the flash mark and wash all those away. There you have it, Facebook fans. High spot welds gone in a matter of what, two and a half minutes? Beat that with a drill. Alright, so now we're going to get set up and do some plasma marking on the CNC table. And before I do that, i got to go back to the machine and swap out torches. I also want to remind you though that if you have questions, feel free to post them and we'll respond to any as we get them. Back over here to the machine. Beauty of fast connect design on the PowerMax 45 and our other PowerMax system, you easily unplug one torch. Well, I'm the mechanized guy. I want to use the machine torch, not the hand torch. Okay. And we'll plug in the machine torch. As we said before, this is all now set up for plasma marking with the PowerMax 45 XP. We are in the gouging mode. We're down at 10 amps, which is ideal for plasma marking. Um, and depending on what you're doing, you may want a deeper mark, and you can raise the amperage up to, let's say, 25 amps uh, and get a deeper mark. And there's a number of controls you have with the plasma torch and the torch height controller uh, to get different uh, mark depths and mark widths. Um, in addition to the height, obviously, you can adjust the amperage, and you can adjust what gas you use. This will do plasma marking either with compressed air or argon. So, so really the, the lowest price marking is just using compressed air, but it's a little more aggressive, so it marks a little bit deeper. But if you want a really, really fine mark, let's say you want to mark where a, a weld is going to go on a finished assembly or a fold line or a bend line, something like that, you don't really want it to be a permanent mark or you don't want it to affect the integrity of the material, uh, then you use argon and, and it just leaves a very light gouge on the surface. Yeah, more or less a temporary mark that yeah. can easily be grinded off later on or covered over with primer and paint. Yeah. So, you know, the, the question that, that a lot of people have asked me is, why did you need a new power supply to mark? Why can't you just stick a marking nozzle or a gouging nozzle uh, in any old plasma power supply? Well, the trick is, most of the power supplies are designed with a minimum uh, current of around 20 to 25 amps, depending on which model it is. Mm -hmm. So it really took power supply design to get a, get the power supply to still be stable down as low as 10 amps, which is absolutely necessary for the marking process and for the precision gouging process. Indeed. Having arc stability at that low end is vital, and obviously having specialized consumables that work on the various torches at that amperage uh, is, is critical to, in, to enable these processes to happen. Yeah. So a question that I get asked also is, uh, so can I use the that new gouging or the marking nozzle on a, a, a other type of thermal system that doesn't go down to 10 amps? Well, you can, but don't expect the same kind of results. It's going to be, it's probably a little bit too much power to get the precision that Harry was just showing and the precision that we're going to show on the marking, but uh, there's potential there. I'm sure it can be used, it just won't be quite as good as the right, XP. The higher amp systems, the minimum uh, they can go down to are 20 amps. Yep. That's, that's pushing the envelope here for a reasonable mark, unless okay. you're looking for a deep mark. All right, well, so we've got the machine torch plugged in. I'm going to walk over to this machine. We're going to talk just for a minute about the machine, and uh, and, and then I'll push the button, and we'll do a mark uh, and see how that goes. Uh, this is a little table right here. This is actually, a, you could call it a home-built table or a do-it-yourself table. It's a little two-by-two, two, and you'll see it if anybody goes to the Fabtech show uh, in Las Vegas in a few weeks. Uh, a table, I don't think it's this one, but it's another one that looks exactly like it <laughs> that'll be there uh, at the show. And we'll be doing uh, marking and cutting with the PowerMax 45 XP. We'll also have two booths uh, for doing hand cutting with the, with the same system, and you can come try it out yourself if you're, if you're at the show. So, a uh, little CMC cutting table like this, uh, something like this would probably be in the Fifteen to twenty thousand dollar range sounds like a lot, but it's cheaper than a bass boat. You know, if you if you really want to put something in your garage that you can do a lot of things with. Uh, neat little table moves moves in the X, Y, and Z 
dimension. Um, they generally will use a, um, a machine torch like this one. This has a breakaway, a magnetic breakaway. So if you do collide with something, you're not going to snap the torch off. Uh, and you can kind of see there's a part that I already uh, already cut and marked. So we're we're just going to show the marking portion of it in just a second. And I'm going to show that feature. Uh, remember, we just disconnected the hand torch and plugged in the machine torch a couple of minutes ago on the PowerMax 45 XP. Well, that same feature that Harry showed at the beginning, uh, where, where it just spits gas out on the very first pierce, uh, is going to come into play. And that's just to be sure that you're, uh, when you push the start button, that you had everything set right. It kind of is a, is a reminder for you. So what I'm going to do is just hit this button. We'll see the torch come down, and we're going to see it just spit. So what I'm going to do is hit stop and hit start the start again, and now we're going to see it do the marking at 200 inches a minute uh, at 10 amps of cutting power, very low power. So, so if you come in a little bit closer, we can see that and cut that off, get it out of the way. Um, you can actually see the mark that was done, and it's easier because I already cut this part using the same process. Uh, the mark is, uh, this is with air, it's probably about as fine as we can do, it's just barely into the surface of it. But there's a lot of applications for it. Once again, as I said before, to, to mark where a weld goes, where a bend line on a part goes, uh, or even if you're doing an artistic wall hanging, uh, a picture of a horse, if you will. Uh, a lot of the lines on the horse on a piece of art, you don't want to cut all the way through, and you can just do, use the marking process to make it look better. And that's typical cut quality. This was cut using the 45 amp process, virtually no dross on the back of the cut. Um, very nice uh, little device. So. Um, we're more than happy to answer any questions for you at any time. I think we probably have a few questions over here. We do, and thanks for those questions. So uh, we had uh, folks asking, can we use the current uh, Duramax torch um, on the 45 XP? So the current Duramax torches are downwards compatible, and uh, it can be used on the 45 XP. And also the you know, the 45 amp, or the T45V and the T45M torches that are currently out there with 45 amp systems. So not uh, the XP torches, but the but original The original 45, 45 torch. torches yeah. can be used on the XP as well. Um, not going to have the same feature capability. Well, you, can't, you don't have the ability to use fine cut consumables. You can't do, you can do some gouging, but not the precision gouging because right. it doesn't go down low enough. And, uh, and that nice uh, torch lock feature um, doesn't work. That's correct. You yeah. don't have the switch on the gold torches. So, but I, I've heard that from a few too. Is if somebody has a 45 right now, maybe they just just the hand torch part, and they're mm -hmm. gonna they're thinking of the 45 XP for machine cutting. Well, keep that keep that hand torch from your original 45 because you can use it uh, if you want. Just once yeah. again, it doesn't have the same flexibility that the new torch has. Right. Yeah. And uh, some asked if those consumables can be used on higher amp systems, and you know they're really designed. The precision gouging consumables are really designed for the new 45 XP. So keep the questions coming in. Um, thank you for that demonstration. As we said, you know the precision gouging and marking process is new to the 45 XP. It's uh, the only system in our lineup today that can do that process. Uh, again, based on the fact that the 45 will go down to 10 amps, which is vital to operate uh, the system for you know controlled gouge removal as well as uh, uh, removal of uh, metal on the surface for marking applications, part identification. Um, marking can be done also by hand using a hand torch. So if you want to create a score line where a bend's going to be or where a weld's going to be placed, uh, you can do that as well. Well, while we've got a second, I'm, I've been using the new PowerMax 45 XP for a couple months now. I got my hands on one of the one of the prototype units before Harry was uh, allowing anyone else to know anything about it. So, And I had it in my home shop on my CNC machine. Very impressed with it. In fact, if you come, if you do come to the Fabtech show in uh, uh, out in Las Vegas in a few weeks, uh, there's a few things there. The, the demo tables that we're using to demonstrate hand cutting that we're allowing uh, uh, customers that come by the booth to actually grab the torch and do a little bit of cutting. Mm -hmm. uh, they were built entirely. Uh, uh, every flat piece of metal that's on them was, was cut with a Power Max 45 before the production was even released. So it's kind of, and I've been really impressed with it. It's been, been working very well for me and. Uh, Nice little, nice little machine. Great, great. And since you mentioned Fabtech, you know, um, at that event, if you're able to get out and see us at uh, the Fabtech show in Vegas, uh, every day we're going to be giving away a PowerMax 45 XP. Uh, Sorry? Can I get one? You don't qualify. Sorry. You already have one. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, so you come try out the system in one of the new uh, cutting booths that uh, Jim built for us, and uh, 
you're entered to win, uh, entered a pro into the prize draw to win uh, one of the daily giveaways of the 45 XP. Um, we're also doing presentations at the, uh, the show, so I'm going to be talking specifically about uh, plasma marking and gouging, and you have a couple uh, presentations yeah, to as well. I'm going to be talking about, uh, we have a comparative cutting conference that talks about if you do want to compare mechanized plasma cutting versus mechanized uh, water jet cutting versus mechanized laser cutting. We've got a great conference that we've been doing for a number of years there that compare the th three processes. Great. So if you do have any more questions, uh, please continue to write them on our post and we'll get right back to you. Uh, but again, thank you for your time today. Uh, please like us on Facebook. We appreciate your support and uh, look forward to um, having these systems out in the field and hearing back from our end users around the world what you think of them. Yep. Great. Have a great day. Thank yep. you. Keep those questions coming on Facebook. We'll answer them.